sorry about that. I was just reading my dictionary. You might be surprised to learn that using a dictionary in C Sharp and in Unity isn't too different from using a dictionary in real life. Let's hop right in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so it goes without saying that using a dictionary in C Sharp and Unity can be a little more complicated than using a dictionary in real life. And that's why first and foremost, the goal of this video is to help you understand exactly what a dictionary is in here and do it in a way that's easy for you to understand as a beginner. Next, we want to help you understand when you should use a dictionary. They can be tremendously powerful tools, especially if you're using and implementing them correctly. They can save you a ton of work down the line. So I suggest that you really try to get familiar with them as fast as you can. And then speaking of which, we're going to show you how you actually go in code and write a dictionary, use getters and setters, and use them to uh, set definitions and retrieve values that you want. But getting started, what is a C-sharp dictionary exactly? And the most simple way of explaining it is it's a useful tool for receiving specific information. And it works by being given a key and then it returns a value for you. But what exactly does this mean? Even that doesn't sound too beginner friendly. Well, let's look back at this real dictionary as an example. So in a real dictionary, you know the word that you want the definition for, and you have to look up its definition. So let's say, for example, that I'm playing Scrabble, and I make the word quaff for a ton of points on the triple word score, and my opponent goes, you're a cheater. What, what the hell is quaff? Well, I know that I want the definition for a quaff, but if I just wanted if I just randomly hope to find it in here, it'd be really hard if I didn't know the word quaff. But because I know the word quaff, I can go to this page here where I bookmarked it and find out that quaff means to drink heartily or in one draught. So the word here is my key and the definition is the value that I'm trying to retrieve. And just like I've said it here, and I'm using the colors to keep it straight for you. The word is the key and the definition is the value. And this is how a Unity dictionary works as well. In C Sharp or in Unity, you make a dictionary and then give it the word or the key that you want to look up, in this case, quaff, and then you retrieve its definition or value. But this would be considered a string and a string. I'm looking up quaff, that's a string, and I'm returning the definition of quaff, which is also a string. In Unity, you don't have to be restricted to strings. Both your key and your value can be any type of variable. So you can use an integer, for instance, uh, to look up a boolean value. So is number 20 is value is key 26 set to true or is key 26 set to false. This is the power of a dictionary. Now let's take a look at a real game here that's using dictionaries in it. This is called Portal Galaxy. It's a game that I made for Android. Go download it. That's my bit of self-promotion here. And like many Android games, it is using an objective-based system. As players progress through levels, they have to meet certain criteria, and when they meet that criteria, they earn a star. Now, a really inefficient way of coding this would be having a single bool for each level and for each star. But by using dictionaries, we can trim all of that down to only using a handful of very small dictionaries that manage all the levels. Now, let me show you what I mean by that in the back end. Okay, this isn't the actual script that I use in the game, but I want to show you what this process might look like if we weren't using dictionaries and then show you how much better it looks because we are in this case. So in the first instance, if we weren't using dictionaries and we were using individual bools, we would have to have multiple bools for each level. So the first level would need three bools called uh, level one, first star earned, level one, second star earned, level one, third star earned. And then the same thing for level two, the same thing for level three, and so forth. You can probably see that would be a ton of work, and you can, can tell just by looking at that, it would be really, really inefficient and a bad idea. Now, you could slightly trim down on that by using arrays instead. And now, instead of having three bulls per level, you could only have one bull per level for all the stars, uh, which just is an array. And instead, now we have level one stars earned and make it size three, and the same for level two and three. The best way is to use dictionaries. Now, in Portal Galaxy's case, what I did is I have three dictionaries 
uh, one for, ha for handling each star. One for the first star earned, one for the second star earned, one for the third star earned. Now at the time I was coding this game, I didn't realize that there was an even better way of doing it, which is that you can put an entire class into a dictionary. So instead of even needing to have three dictionaries, I could just have one dictionary to manage all of the levels in the entire game, and then through this single dictionary, we could retrieve all the values on an as-needed basis. So if I was to go here and to start and declare level, level is equal to my level dictionary at position one, I can now type level and go into this and get the functions out of here that are public and accessible, like level.firstCondition. Okay, so I hope you're starting to get a good sense of why you might want to use a dictionary, but what about the when? When is it the right time to use a dictionary over, say, an array or a list, which admittedly are kind of similar? Well, the first time you might want to use a dictionary is when there are a lot of very similar variables that might otherwise be required. But even this isn't too distinguishable from an array or a list. At this point, any three of them might be a good option. But a dictionary comes in handy when you need new key value pairs to be assigned and retrieved on the go. Now, with my game Portal Galaxy, for example, as I've mentioned, I use dictionaries extensively when I'm creating levels. Now, the advantage here is that as I create new levels, all I have to do in the front end is copy and paste a new level, and then I just have to, in the inspector view, change things like its level ID and some of the criteria and objectives associated with that level that the player must meet. But no coding is needed in the back end. That's all done, and that's all handled through dictionaries. Dictionaries make this process really, really easy. And finally, when you want to retrieve specific information about a particular object, dictionaries are a great example because you're giving it that key and you're retrieving that value. So I'm doing this all the time in Portal Galaxy in the other games I'm working on. But think about a game like an RPG where you're creating a sword or a shield or a bow or a spell, and each one of these objects has different stats associated with it. Weapon damage, defense, magical power, all of these values can easily be handled and retrieved by a dictionary as they're needed without taking any additional operating power from the user's device, whether that's a smartphone or a computer. So I realized that my game might be a little bit complicated in terms of understanding how dictionaries work. So what I've done here is I've created a very simple example and we're gonna follow along exactly with the code and I'm gonna show you how to code your own dictionaries so you can get started right away. Now in this example, all I'm doing here is I'm entering a level number and I'm gonna say level two for example and saying get values and it's gonna tell me whether or not stars have been earned. I type level three, press get values and it tells me the values for that level four, five, and I can just keep doing this over and over. Let's go into the back end and take a look at what's being done. So here is the back end for this game. Now, this isn't really a game, it's just an example. So the level script has only four variables in it that are declared. This public integer level ID represents our dictionary's key, and then we have three private bools which are serialized so we can edit them in the inspector, to determine if the stars have been earned for each of these levels. Now, if we go back up here into the game view, we can see by clicking on each of these levels that we have manually edited the level ID in each of these levels to be representing level one, two, three, four, and five, and then just setting some values for whether or not the first, second, or third star has been earned. In a real game, first the stars being earned would be determined by the player, but for this example, we're just setting that manually. Let's go back to the script. The very first step is to add levels into the dictionary. And we do that through in the level script, which is attached to each one of these levels in the start method, just typing the method name add new level. In this add new level method, we're sending our key and values to the dictionary and the dictionary is declared in the level manager script. Now again, the key is the level ID and our value is this script itself. We're starting off by finding the level manager through game object .find object of type. And if this particular line of code confuses you, I have another video I'll link which explains this in great detail. 
And then in the level manager script, we're calling the method add new level and passing through our key and our value. Now in the level manager script, this is how we declare a dictionary. First, we set it to either be private or public. And then we call it a dictionary. We declare the key type. We declare the value type. We give it a name. And then we have to say it's equal to a new dictionary and just repeat this information. Now let's go down to the method here, add new level. And it's very simple. It's one line of code. We're just saying level dictionary dot add and then adding our level ID and the level script or the level class itself into the dictionary. Now doing it this way is quite simple. However, it does have potential to cause errors and I'll show you what I mean. If we go back up here to the game, we are already seeing that if we enter one, it gives us values, two, it gives us values, but we only have five levels. And what happens if we try to get values for level six, which does not exist? If we press get values, it's gonna give us a key not found exception. And that's because of the way we've currently coded this, which I'll be showing you how to fix momentarily. But for now, I wanna finish taking you through the code. When we click the get values button, we're calling this method here in level manager, called set star text. And this is where we're now reaching into the dictionary and we are pulling out the values that we have requested. And here's where we're doing this. We're declaring a new level and we're calling this variable this level. And we're just saying it's equal to our level dictionary at position level ID. Now the level ID is taken from this string variable and that's whatever the player has entered into that text box that's converted to an int, and then we're using that as our key to reach into the, into the dictionary at that position and return this level. Then we're just using a for loop to go in and use that value we've retrieved to get the star text values, basically, whether or not a star has been earned at each of these positions. That's not the important part of this video. I just wanna show you how to go in and reach into the dictionary and set those values. Next, I want to show you how to properly add and retrieve values from dictionaries without getting errors. Now, I did just show you how we can accidentally get an error from trying to retrieve a value that doesn't exist, but what about getting an error from adding values into the dictionary? So all I've done here is I've created a button called add levels and in our level manager script that calls a method called find and add levels. And previously where we had been automatically entering these level values from the start method, we're just now adding these values manually. So let's run it and see what happens if we press this. So I press the button once and nothing happens because I've just added all of the levels. But if I press it a second time, it's going to give me this error argument exception, an item with the same key has already been added. And that's because we're trying to now double enter these levels into our dictionary. And it's telling us, hey, what are you doing? These values already exist. You can't enter them twice. Let's see how we can go and fix that. So this right here is our problem line. We're trying to add the values. And the first time this works okay, but the second time it's giving us that error. Instead of just typing this line of code, we can contain this within an if statement. And what we want to do is say, if level dick dot contains key, we're saying if this key already exists and the key being our level ID, instead of adding it, what we want to do is just update the dictionary. So key already exists, don't add update. Now we're going to say level dick at position level ID equals this level. So this, we're just basically accessing it the same way we would in an array, and we're just giving it a new value. Now under else, we can say this, add the new level, just cut, cut and paste that in there, save, and let's go test it out. Actually first, just to be thorough, we'll put in print statements and say, level already exists, updating, and here we can say print new level added. Now, if we hit play, 
we can say add levels and it's get, going to tell us new level added and it's going to do this five times because there's five levels and if we do it again it's going to tell us level already exists updating and if i press it it's just going to run that five more times and now we can add or update levels without encountering errors now finally what about getting levels without getting errors well instead of it's very similar actually but instead of calling this we're going to write a new method here and we're going to say get level from dict and now we're going to write this method here and we're going to call it private level get level from dict and now we're going to write out level level equals null for now and then we're going to return the level at the end and now we're going to reach into that dictionary and see if it exists and how are we going to do that well again we're going to basically write the same if statement if level dict dot contains key and actually i forgot to pass through the key so we're going to do that first so under here we're going to pass through our level id and then we are going to declare int level id and now we're going to ask it if this dictionary has that level id in it and if it does have that level id we can say level is equal to what we copy pasted earlier level dictionary at position level id and then we can write an all statement and we can just debug dot log this by saying trying to get level value for a level that doesn't exist and now we could return level which is either going to return as null or it's going to return as the requested level. And as one final step, we can say if this level equals null, return. Now we can do something else here, perhaps a little more interesting, but for now, this should suit our purposes. So let's try to run this and see what happens. So we're gonna run the game. And we know already that uh, first we're going to add the levels because we have to add them manually. And now if we were to try to get values for level one, it's going to give us that. Two, it's going to give us. But if we type in level six, it's it's not going to give them us our values. However, it's also not going to give us an error. It's just going to tell us we're trying to get level values for a level that doesn't exist. You can get them for five though, but six not going to exist. Seven not going to exist, or pretty much anything else. And this is a much safer way of coding dictionaries because we're just accounting for some user error or even some errors that we might accidentally throw at the game. Hey, so I know dictionaries can be a bit of a tricky subject to get a grasp on, but I hope that by watching this simple video, even with these really basic examples that I've been using, you can already start to see the tremendous power that dictionaries have and how they can really help you streamline and keep your game organized so you can take it to the next level. Please feel free to let me know if you have any questions or comments. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one.